Hi, this is Miss Mary Kay with the To Be Continued Book Club. If you're not familiar with this, this is where I read a chapter. I introduce you to a book. And actually, I'm currently doing the Caudill uh, Award winners for 2025. These are the ones that ha are the nominees. And this book is called Alias Anna, written by Susan Hood with Greg Dawson. Now, I, re I tell you a little bit of the summary. We'll talk a little bit about the author. And then I get into the book and I'm going to read the first chapter to you. And you get to decide if this is something you're interested in. Do you want to continue on and find out what happens in the book? Or are you as curious about where this story is going after we get introduced to the first chapter? You can take this book out from your library or also from Hoopla or Libby and read it on any e-book reading device that you currently read on. So this book, Alias Anna, and just to tell you a little bit about it, I'm going to go right off the cover. And it says, she wouldn't be Zana. She used an alias, A for Anna, A for Alive. When the Germans invade Ukraine, Zana, a young English girl, must leave behind her friends, her freedom, and her prom promising musical future at a world-renowned conservatory. With no time to say goodbye, Zana, her sister, Frina, and their entire family are removed from their home by the Nazis and forced on a long, cold death march. When her father bribes a guard, Zana escapes with nothing more than her musical talent, her beloved Chopin sheet music, and her father's final plea, I don't care what you do, just live. So this book is told in verse by award-winning author Susan Hood. And also, this is the unique part, it's also told with Zana's own son, Greg Dawson. This is the moving true story of how piano prodigies Zana, which is alias Anna, and her sister Frina outplayed their pursuers while hiding in plain sight. So this is a true story and imagine that this is her son that's also helping in writing this book. And now a little bit about Greg Dawson. He was a print journalist for nearly 50 years, starting at age 17. When he was in high school, he was a columnist, TV critic, and consumer advocate for a host of publications, including the Boston Herald, Orlando Sentinel, and the Indianapolis Star. He has per published two books on the Holocaust, and a third he co-authored with his wife Candy on Coming of Age in the 60s. He grew up in Bloomington, Indiana, the son of a classical musician. His first book, Hiding in the Spotlight, told the story of how his mother used her piano virtuoso ed to survive the Holocaust. And Susan Hood is an award-winning author of many books for young readers. And she's a recipient of many awards. And you can uh, find out more of her about her on her website, susanhoodbooks.com. So as we said, this is written in verse. So it's going to have poems. So I'm just opening up the first page, alias Anna, and starting with the poems. There's some maps here to help you understand where the area is that they are. So the first one is called a letter. Dear Grandma Z, hi, how are you doing? I hope everything is going well for you right now. I am writing this letter for a school history project we are doing. The project is to find out as much as possible about our grandparents and what was going on when they were 13 years old. Some specific things I would like to know are what life was like overall in 1940. What was your home life like? Also, what are some major world events you remember from around that time? I would really appreciate if you could write me back and tell me some more about your life. I look forward to hearing from you and hope to see you soon. Happy holidays. Love, Amy Dawson. The next poem. When Zana was Amy's age, how could she answer her granddaughter? 
long buried horrors, stifled sorrows. Zana had pushed away, pushed down, now came rushing up like bile. Rifles, soldiers, the pit in her stomach, shoving, bitter cold, icy stairs, families lined up, little children, grandparents, people laughing, pointing, taking pictures, humiliation, confusion. What had they done? Where were they going? A bribe? A whisper? Running, 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 escape. She had to hide, but where, but how? And the third poem, a new name. She'd hidden behind a new identity. That was it. She wouldn't be Zana. She'd use an alias. She'd drop the ZH from her name and become Anna. Small, plainer, more able to blend in. She'd begin again. A is for Anna. A is for al alive. So part two is going to start next, and it's going to tell you a prelude of what happened before. So this being written in verse allows them to show more emotion and get into the story a little bit better. I think you will get to know Alias Anna a lot better through the verse of how they put this book out. It's very unique and very... It just gets you because it's a true story. It's not someone's imagination. It is a true story of outwitting the Nazis and to go on with a musical career and to have families. It's, it's amazing. So this book I recommend. And if you want to read it, again, check it out from the library or take it out from Hoopla or Libby and read it on any e-book device that you currently read on. Until next month, this is Miss Mary Kay with To Be Continued Book Club. Please keep reading.